Okay, last lesson in Unit 10, Lesson 7, deals with linear, quadratic, and exponential word problems. All right, uh, hopefully after this video you're able to take a word problem, look at it, and determine whether or not it's linear, quadratic, or, exp or exponential, and explain how you know the difference. All right, um, so at this point we've pretty much seen all these different word problems. Okay, we saw the quadratics in the previous uh, unit, we saw linear equations uh, two units before that, all right, and now we saw the exponentials in this particular chapter. So this is all pretty much review at this point, all right, with the exception of making sure you know how to tell the difference between them, okay? So for each problem, what we're going to do is three different pieces. First of all, we're going to explain what type of function it is and how we know it. Second, we're going to write an equation, and then third, we're going to go ahead and actually answer the equation, okay? So question number one. In 1990, the tuition at a private college was $15,000. During the next nine years, tuition increased about 7.2% each year. About how much money did one year of college cost in 1996? So, part A, all right, is, once again, explain what type of function we have and how we know that. Well, I could say from reading this, all right, we know the growth uh, of the uh, cost of tuition in college went up 7.2% each year. So that means it goes up 7.2% and then it becomes bigger the next year because you're taking 7.2% of a bigger number. Okay, that's exponential growth. All right, so we have exponential because... there is a growth rate, okay? So basically we're looking for those key parts of an exponential uh, function or linear or quadratic when we get to it, okay? So our equation then is going to be a growth model with percent. So I'm looking at y equals the initial cost uh, times one plus the rate as a decimal to whatever the uh, x power is in this problem. So what that's going to look like is this. The initial cost, $15,000. And we're adding, remember, we don't use the percent, we use the decimal. 1 plus 0 0.072 to the x, which will be simplified to 15,000 times 1.072 to the x. Okay, so there's my equation. All right, and then part C, I meant to highlight that. Part B was write the equation. Okay, and then part C was to make sure we answer this thing. So let me take care of part C now. Okay, it says how much did one year of college cost in 1996? So remember that 1990 was year zero. So that means 1996 is going to be year six. So I take my equation and apply my new exponent or my exponent of 6 to find out that in 1996 a year of college tuition costs about $22,700 for one year. Alright, so let's take a look at example 2. Example 2 says Lavin Cell Phone Company advertised a service for 3 cents per minute plus a monthly fee of $29.95. If Cameron's phone bill for October was $38.95, find the number of minutes he used. All right? So when I read this, I read this $0.07 cents per minute, and I read that as a constant rate of change. Okay? Remember, our definition of linear equations is that they have a constant rate of change. So we would say that this is linear because it has a constant rate of change. rate of change. Again, I know I understand it's constant because when I say, okay, for one minute, that's three cents. Two minutes, it goes up to six. Three minutes, it goes up to nine. It keeps going up three each time. All right, that's a constant difference of three every time. All right, part B has me write an equation. Okay, and when I look here, I'm going to be using a linear equation, so I'm going to be using y equals mx plus b, okay? So in this case, 
Remember, my common difference is my slope, or my rate of change. So in this case, it's 3. And my 2995 is my starting point. All right, so x in this problem is going to equal the number of minutes. And I should have went up here and said what x is in this equation. x equals the number of years from 1990. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and answer the last piece, part C. All right, we're told uh, Cameron's bill was thirty-eight ninety-five, and now we just need to solve our two-step equation. Okay, this one's going to require a little bit of uh, review work here. All right, subtracting my flat rate over. All right, that's going to get me uh, nine. Oh. Oh, I have a mistake. Oh, no. Uh, three cents, by the way, is not three. That would be three dollars. It's point zero three. There we go. Let's make that change. Point zero three. Point zero three. So then we go ahead and divide by point zero three. And we're going to end up with x equaling 300, which means uh, Cameron spent 300 minutes on his phone during that time. All right. Please make sure you made that change right here, 0 0.03. All right. Obviously, it's going to make a huge difference in your answer. Okay, moving on. Joe launches a toy rocket upward from ground level with an initial velocity of 128 feet per second. Then its height after t seconds is given by the equation that you see there, the function h of t is equal to negative 16 t squared plus 128 t. What is the maximum height achieved by the toy rocket? Well, here's one of the good things about quadratic equations, okay, part a. When we did these type of word problems, we were always given a function all right, or an equation to plug into or formula. All right, so we know right off the bat that this is quadratic, all right, because the formula has a degree of 2. As a degree of 2. Okay, now let's go ahead and move on to part B. Let's go ahead and substitute all of our information in. Actually, that's done for us, sorry. We have the, the uh, function, okay? Part C, we have to find the maximum height. So what's going on here is we understand we have a negative A value, which means we have a parabola that's going to be doing this, okay? It's going to be leaving from the ground, going up in the air, and then landing in the ground somewhere, okay? Um, we understand that at this point right here, we have our vertex, which is the height. So if I could find the y value in the vertex, I could find the highest point achieved. So in order to do this, we have to find the vertex, which means we have to find the axis of symmetry, which once again was the opposite of b over 2 times a. All right, and doing that calculation, I'm going to end up with positive 4. So then what I do is I figure out what h of 4 is. So I'm going to plug 4 in for t, and do my calculations there. This is going to be negative 256. That's going to be 512, which means my maximum height is going to be 256 feet. Okay? Um, so quadratic equations and formulas are a little bit easier because, like I said, when we did it, we were given the formula. Okay, moving on. Number four, we have two problems left. The hospital prepares a 100 milligram supply of tech, I don't know, I'm going to know if I'm going to say this right, technium 99 millimeters, all right, um, which is a certain drug they use uh, to uh, treat cancer, okay, which has, and it has a half-life of six hours, all right. How much of the chemical is left in the patient after three hours? All right, so obviously we're dealing with exponential decay here. And I probably should have said that up here, that this was growth, exponential growth, and this is decay, because uh, the drug in the person's system is going, is getting smaller, it's being cut in half. All right, again, 
because uh, exponential decay because it decreases. I'm having a hard time writing with this today. It decreases by one half every six hours. Now this is tough. Be careful with this six hours piece here as we go to read this. All right. So my formula looks like this. I have y is equal to, uh, we're not dealing with a percent, so I'm going to do the old, uh, the original one like this, okay? And I have my initial value is 800. It's cut in half, all right, per unit of x. And x, once again, all right, is the number of six-hour intervals. So if we were asked how much is in the patient after six hours, that would be one six-hour interval. If we were asked how much is in the patient after 12 hours, that would be a two for my exponent because that would be two six-hour intervals. All right, so we're asked about three hours. Well, three is half of six. So what we're asking is, what is this left after a half of an interval? Okay, so be careful because we have a fraction in the exponent as well as with the base here. Okay, so plugging that number in, we're going to end up with there being about 70.71 milligrams of this drug left in the patient after three hours. Okay, uh, there's you tries on the back. We'll see you tomorrow.